Well, welcome back. It's the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And it's time to take a look at some major headlines and some national dailies. And we begin with the Punch newspaper. The Punch newspaper leads with CCB tells Tinubu others to submit forms before May 29th. And two writers accompanying that headline, you read asset declaration ongoing in 36 states. No swearing in without form submission, the CCB says. And then you have Biru says defaulters risk removal from office. 40 Ogo politicians obtain forms. That's an asset declaration there, the major headline on the Punch newspaper. Subsidy removal. Nigerians may spend 8 trillion naira on petrol in six months. Details of that you find on page 9 of the Punch newspaper. Protests as Northwest backs Akbabu for Senate presidency. Details of that on page 7 of the Punch. And my ordeal with aggressive breast cancer. That's designer Alice Madeke. Uh, details of that ordeal of hers you read on page 12. Uh, and then going down, you have that story we told you about the tanker. A fair laden tanker crashes grounds Lagos Ibado Express traffic. Well, that's it on the Punch newspaper. Okay, we're moving to the next paper, which is The Guardian. The Guardian is leading with businesses up for unconventional debts as interest rate nears 35%. Interest rate near 35%. Uh, that is on uh, The Guardian, uh, the leading headline there on The Guardian. We also have another one. Uh, this one reads, federal government airlifts 888 Nigerians from Egypt, plans more evacuation. There is also the story of uh, passengers. What am I getting into? <laughs> okay, there is flight, flight disruptions in Abuja as Max Air loses landing wheel. You find that on page two of The Guardian. Uh, diesel tanker accident uh, worsens gridlock on Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Okay, we've taken that also before. Sudan crisis. We slept on the floors as bullets killed people on bed. That's uh, people who survived it and are back right now uh, telling their story. And then we also have these uh, Oshun public education infrastructure in dire straits. That is also on the Guardian. And the, the 10th National Assembly revolt looms in APC. Members kick against imposition of candidates. Uh, those were very important headlines on the Guardian. They're uh, reaching you. All right. Well, from The Guardian, we move over to the Daily Trust newspaper. And the Daily Trust newspaper leads with aspirant move against Tinubu's anointed candidate. You have writers there. What attracted me to President-elect Abbas? We were not consulted. Was his camp? Endorsement mere speculation, Gaji. But Terra declares today and... Well, that's the writer. You have... NAPDAC raises alarm over importation of banned pesticides from UK. Details of that is on page 30. Man beats son to death for stealing one mudu of millet. Details of that, page 20. Learn from Sudan experience. NSCIA tells Nigerians that's on page 7. Right on top of the Daily Trust, you have Tribunal begins hearing Atiku OB, three other petitions today. Details of that can be found on page 12 of the Daily Trust. Mixed feelings in Kano over Kwankwaso's statement on Sanusu's dethronement. Details of that on page 3. 77 trillion naira debt fuel subsidy. Three other issues Tinubu will inherit from Buhari. We have details of that on page 22 of 
the Daily Trust newspaper. Okay, um, the Daily Independent is next, and we have some very interesting stories there as well. 22.7 trillion ways and means loans securitization seen as mixed back. Daily Independent. 144 passengers cheat death <coughs> as Max Air flight crash lands in Abuja. NCAA and SIB deploy officials. That's also on the Daily Independence. You can read that up. Um, Serap sues federal government over failure to recover double pay from ex-governors. That's on page 7. Osimbajo flags of Imo's Oguta Orashi River dredging on Thursday. The story is on page 6 of the Daily Independent. At last, Buhari inaugurates Dangote refinery on May 22. That's also on page 6. And another story on page 6 is uh, villagers panic as Zamfara bandits relocate to Katsina. The same page, we have Arewa Consultative Forum kicks against Apabio as Senate President. All those stories can be found on Daily Independence. There are other stories. On top of that, you will find a story about NLC, uh, disruption of aviation activities illegal. That is according to FAANMD, Babalakin. Agency seeks federal government's protection against mob action. And a final story there is a presidential election. PDP raises the alarm over alleged plot by APC to influence tribunal. Those were the headlines from the Daily Independent. Okay, and from the Daily Independent, we'll go to Nature News. COP28, countries split over fossil fuels and carbon capture. That's the leading headline on Nature News. On top of that, you have Dangote refinery set to be inaugurated May 22. Going down, you have NICOMSAT interview. Details of that interview you'll find on page 19 of Nature News. FG commissions Ibado gemstone market. Hmm. Page 11, and people, wildlife, and unusual integration in Nigeria. Page 14 of that newspaper will give you details of that. Yeah, there you have climate activist King Charles III is crowned in the UK. Yes, he is known for being an activist, mm -hmm. climate activist. You have his picture there, picture of King Charles III on Nature News, celebrating one of their own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, that's the much we can take on the headlines, but that's not all we're going to take mm -hmm. from the newspapers because we have our guest, Opunabo Inkotaria, who is a public affairs analyst joining us to dissect some of these newspapers. Good morning to you, Opunabo. Good morning, morning. Good morning. Yeah. It's okay, so good to have you join us today. Uh, we're hoping that you're going to have a wonderful week. Uh, that I don't know. <laughs> you will. It's a prayer that we're praying for you. I promise. Yes, it's not in my, not in my dear. <laughs> okay, well, let's lead with uh, the headlines of uh, the Punch newspaper on asset declaration. CCB tells Tunubu others to submit forms before May 29. Um, let's talk about that, Opunabo. Yes, we will. We're going to quickly um, add one or two things to your discussion before we When you are talking about the issue of inequality complex, uh, Nigerians wanting to be more European than European, uh, more Western than the Western. I think it's a function of the drum, the drum major instinct a great function of uh, complex. If you listen carefully to most Nigeria, especially the ones who started traveling as adults, rather than saying, please can I have talk, we are can I have sex, you know, all those kind of thoughts, <laughs> thinking uh, they, are, they, are, they want to speak like the people. But uh, it has more to do with complex. You see somebody in Nigeria who has traveled for the first time in his life as an adult, 
once a friend visits him, the first thing he says, about half an hour, uh, thank God you come today, because I won't travel to America. Even when it is very unnecessary. So that is why we've lost that African that. And you see somebody say, I gotta go. And most times when they travel out, they go to the slums. Because if you listen to an educated American, or an educated Britain, you will hear clearly what he's talking about. His words are well pronounced. But when you travel out and you go to the slums, where most of them go to, they speak this agara, agara. It's like somebody speaking the Tibetan language in Nigeria. Mm. And to them, they have a right. And that is why most of we've lost our values, like I've already said, and so on. We've lost our Nigerian, less our African. But more I think we also said uh, a lot of these things, we are giving them back. Because there is so much awareness. You see in Nigeria, we say, give me pork. Give me, uh, I'll call the nurse for me. We which one will tell you call the next for me. This has nothing to do with your education at all. It has nothing to do with whether you have a PhD or not. That's a part, uh, what what affects your reason. It has to do with your upbringing and your willingness to also learn. Because if you, I have a friend who is the F word, I'll end on this note. Who is the F word? What was using the F word? I said to him, My dear, there are certain places you go to in the States. And if you use the F word, they walk here. Because as far as they are concerned, the downtrodden are the ones that use that. They went to an office in the, in the US. And I think sometimes you say, ah, oh, that hot, go to the F word. And they told him to walk out of the office. He was still in the US when they called me out of the golf club. to say, if my boy, you're right I said that I told you. I said that I told you. It has to do with God. Yeah. Let's go back to why we are yeah, yeah, but just to add to that a little bit of Puna Bob, because I cannot let that go. Uh, yes, those are gonna, <laughs> uh, yeah, I gotta go, I gotta go. That one is trash. But you see, when it comes to British English here in Nigeria, that's what we use. And from primary school to secondary school, there is what they call phonetics and phonology that's been taught to people. And in the course of that, you're taught to speak the language almost as close, if not as the native speakers themselves. Just as yeah, French, yeah. when you're being taught French, yeah. you're taught to speak it as the native speakers. So those who yeah. do that, it's not that they're trying to sound fake, it's what they've been taught. Phonetics and phonology is working. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> no, 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 no. They, never told, they never told you fake. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not talking no, no, no. about they those who are... The no, teacher not talking... never told you next. It is not. Never told you next. But they believe that they cannot say fuck for the other reason. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. That is their belief. So it is fair. Uh, they are very like next. It is not. Definitely. Well, it's just the mentality. That's the point. Not that they are not. And apart from that, how many teachers know this know these things? <laughs> how many teachers know this? True. I tell you where a senior advocate in court said, My Lord, this is Warsaw. <laughs> In court, in River State, you know, this is Warsaw. That's a senior advocate. Oh, so, you understand what I'm doing? You see that he was not caught? But he just felt some leader they didn't go attend the classes. You know, in Nigerian schools, you can, once you're, a, once you're a politician, you're bound to have a first class if you, start, if you go to school. You're bound to have a first class. You're going to run uh, from first degree to PhD within six years or seven years. They don't even go to class. How many of our national legis legislators can even recite the national anthem? They told that they tested even the ministers. They told them recite the national They could not. There was, there was but this... in the country, they are more important than you. These things happen because was... of the environment in which we find ourselves. Mm. You can stay at home and have your PhD. These days, all you need to do is have the money. And you have a PhD. Well, we you find out that to... all people, most, most people who could not even uh, mm -hmm. go to the past their jam or wire. Once they get into the house, especially the legislators, in that two years, he has a PhD. Well, there is telling a case of speak, the Nassau State. Tell him yeah. to speak or defend that bill. Or defend that bill. You win. Hmm. You win. Well, I... Let, let's we'll, we'll, we'll go on with this up and up. <laughs> you're right you're right there is the abuse of the words and yeah there are those who are just you know being yeah. funny but there are those who are actually speaking trying to speak yeah. well because I, that's I, what they've been i tell my students speak. when i teach nobody is perfect i tell you i say nobody is perfect 
mm -hmm. at all. I, Nobody. I but tell you, certain, certain level is expected of you. Yes. Yes. No, but nobody is perfect. Nobody. Okay. Not even the, the British man is perfect. <laughs> that's the truth. Let's just so go back to the headlines, please. Yes, we need to get back to the headlines. This yeah. asset declaration thing, CCB tells Tinubu others to submit forms before May 29th. It's a legal requirement. We don't want our own office. They got the form. And it's also criminal if you don't. Mm -hmm. You can go to jail for it. Now, what is the whole essence? The whole essence, I don't know if Tinubu is going to do it because I've always said I don't have faith in that man when you look at the subject. And sadly, in Nigeria, we have a situation where um, once you're in office, with the Tinubu case, it's even going to have what you call immunity. So you can't even see, you can see when he's out of office. Once it's one, because that will not stop the swearing in. That's the truth about it. Yeah, that but they said stop no the declaration, no so, swearing in. They said that as well. No, that's, that, no, that's, that's, that's mountain pass or whatever. It's not going to stop this. It's definitely not going to stop this right now. It will be sworn in May 29th. Or else that because she's not Christ. But having said that, who's going to stop it? Is this CCD that will take him to court? You take him to court, the matter of dragon, he will, I mean, when he's out of office. If he's going to spend 80, he's going to spend 80. Or is it Gwari that will say, no, you can't be sworn in? No, nobody will stop him. Let's face facts. But it's a legal requirement. What might happen if you have a man of rectitude as the CCB chairman and CCT chairman. The one present CCT chairman himself uh, is not a man of rectitude. We all knew what happened, how he assaulted somebody, went to court and so on. I don't know why that man is still there. He ought to have been kicked out of that. It's a disgrace to Nigeria because the video went viral. Now, what the truth is, what is going to happen is if you have a man of rectitude, a stickler for the rules and law, when he's out of office, he can be sued. Because you ought to do this before, it's, it's a prerequisite. You have to do this before you are being sworn in. Now, if for eight years you fail to do it, and you have somebody who is a stickler for the rules, and who has a gumption, who is not afraid of your status, definitely you can be sworn, you can be prosecuted, and will be jailed. Now, what is the whole essence? The whole essence is for to avoid corruption. Now, if, for example, you had five houses before you were sworn in as president, and by the time you're leaving office, you have 20 houses, then it will raise questions. How did you amass? Because while in office, you cannot say you're doing business. While in office, you're interdicted from doing business or from doing anything extra official. You cannot get involved in anything. No fake backs. You are not even supposed to receive gifts. If you remember the issue of Professor Tan David West, it was a cup of tea and a gold dish or gold dish that are sent him to jail. Now, the whole essence is because it's to prove that, look, while in office, you are not even supposed to receive a viral pen from anybody as a gift. Not at all. Because it can be seen, it can be interpreted to mean that was a pen that was used to bribe. So if you had five houses before you got into office, which you ought to declare before. The, you, you, you swear to the oath, then it is also presumed that by the time you're leaving office, you should not have six. If you say you now have six houses, how? Can your salary afford the six house? Yes, my salary can afford the six thousand. Then fine. Then you also now prove that the salaries you are being paid went into the six house. That is the whole essence of asset declaration. To ensure fraud. But in Nigeria, is it the case? No. In the case of Onanagen, it was weaponized. Even though the process was absolutely flawed, because the president was interested, and there was a particular uh, minister that was also interested, because the CJN then failed to do his bidding. So it was weaponized against him. Nevertheless, how many persons have gone to jail? The next person that was prosecuted was Saraki. But he was able to disentangle himself because he had his records straight in court. But even at that, his state governor went after him. You remember when they seized his properties in Forest. So the question now, we have the law, but how many people are going to enforce the law? Mm. You know, that is where we have the problem. But if you talk of 
were um, banning or stopping preventing um, Bola Metinibu from being inaugurated as the president come May 29th. On this premise, it's going to be a fleeting illusion. But why do, you think that, why do you think that he wouldn't want to declare his assets, Opunabo? His antecedents, his antecedents. Your perception of somebody and the antecedents of the person will make will give you an, an informed decision on that person. We are looking at his antecedents. We have all kinds of criminal cases against all kinds of criminal cases. We don't know his age. We don't, even, even if the asset is declared, I will not vouch for the veracity of that declaration. I would rather vouch for the appropriate foundness of the declaration and not the veracity. I don't know his, we don't know his age, we don't know his parents. He's 71, his daughter is 61. Uh, uh, his, his academic qualifications, the um, drug uh, allegation, that one I can rightly say because he was convicted. He didn't go to prison, but he paid the sum. It's the same. You, I can even, you can even be convicted and you're on parole. You must not be locked up in an area. Conviction is conviction. Even if you are convicted for 5,000 naira, it's conviction. It's the same as a man who went to prison. So that's what we can say because the records are there. So why do you think I want to trust such a man and believe his declaration? I will never believe that declaration. And what is he going to declare? The so-called business mogul. What is he going to declare? So I will never believe that. So let's leave that, my dear sister. Let's forget that. But they just say go and declare. Mark today what I've just told you. He will declare, and you see, it is going to generate a lot of worry. A whole lot of it. Because certain persons who are close to him, and probably they parted with, will come up with other issues. You remember even during the election, or before the election, what he said. Some persons came out with declaration. Tell us how much you have. Tell us your what. Tinubu evaded all those questions, including the local status system. And Lima, they, they completely avoided the question of Tinubu. Some said, how can you know the word of Sunday? Why would you know the word of Sunday if you're paying tax? If you're paying tax, you're going to definitely know your worth. So he completely avoided it. If he avoided it then, why is he going to declare it now? When he knows that he's definitely going to amass more wealth. So why is he going to declare it now? Okay, if he declares uh, it now, definitely, he's going, he's, going to, he's going to affect him because he cannot amass. Let's, you let's, heard that his son just bought a house in London, now, in now, now. London, in London, yes, how much? Let's leave the so let us, let now. So let us leave the matter. Hmm. Now, uh, let's, let's, look at, let's look at what is happening because our time is running out. Uh, the National Assembly, uh, there is a candidate that has been anointed by the party and the president-elect himself. And within the party, there's infighting. Uh, what, what do you think about uh, all what is happening? Who is that candidate? Uh, um, what is his name again? Akpavio. Yeah. Is that Akpavio? Akpavio. Mm. From, from illegality. The president of Senate. Well, it's, it's Nigeria. Uh, <laughs> I said, <laughs> you all know what I'm talking about. Uh, even this election is, uh, well, it's okay. Uh, now we are talking of infighting, isn't it? Now, the truth about it is that Tinubu will want somebody that will do his bidding at every point in time. He will want another Lawan. Who said they are not there to fight the president, but to work with the president and endorse whatever the president? But in the in, in the case of Akpabio, he must have pledged all kinds of loyalty and made all kinds of promises. But I can tell that Akpabio is a man of his own. Is if Akpabio becomes the state president, it will be it will be almost impossible. It will be a major fight. To impeach and remove him. I said impeach and remove him. I, I, I believe we all know that impeachment yeah. is not removal. Yeah. Impeachment is a process. There are two different things. It's just an, an official indictment. That's what impeachment is. So even if the president wants to remove him, Akwabio is, is loaded, as we say in our local palace. And Akwabio is a politician to the core. Akwabio, if he's serious, we want to do another salary. Now, he must have made all kinds of pledges, promised Mr. President that he's going to be in control of the Senate, that they're not going to be in tough time, and so on. He must have, because he's a sweet talker. I give that to him. And that's why probably Mr. President settled for him. Right. And this agreement must have been reached before 
the presidential um, primaries. Now, I probably have to step back. They must have reached all these agreements, but kept it to themselves. And now it's out. If you also look at the zoning, you have the president from the southwest. You have the uh, vice president from the north. In all fairness, I would have felt they would have given it to the east. If you really want inclusiveness, and you don't want to maintain stability, oneness, you should have gone to the east. But for whatever reasons, it's going to the south south, which I think is not fair. I'm a reverse man from the south. But if we want the unity of this country to continue, because you find out that the tenuous ligatures are already threatened, the East feels marginalized. You know? So if we want that unity to continue, we would have given it to the East. The very large estate will have placated them, they would have been assumed. The very large estate. But then it's politics. But let me also come in with this habit. Don't forget that um, in, in before Dogara, the agreement then was that they should go and vote for Bajabi Amila. And they all they were all put in the bus. They were on the bus. They drove down to the venue. Since declined immediately and voted for Dogara. But Jamalila was supposed to be the speaker, as I think Dubara emerged as the speaker. So it's politics, anything can happen. It's a concentric circle of uh, conspiracies and articulated interests. So anything can happen. It's not over until it is over. Because it, it has created schism, planted schism. And a lot of people go back to their homes to plot again to see how they can frustrate and string the decision of uh, Bola Martin. Okay, uh, well, uh, because of time, that's the much we can take. There are so many things on the headlines that we would have wanted to... Honestly, discuss. honestly, I, yes. I don't know why I even talked about <laughs> Yes. Because well, I saw the interesting headlines. I made a mistake to talk about the first nonsense I talked about. No, it wasn't It wasn't, okay. it wasn't, it wasn't nonsense, a mistake. But it's then, okay. You, 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 you give your thoughts on that. Uh, look at them, yeah. So All right. I would like to thank, thank you. Thank you, Warren. Thank you, Agadu. It's always my pleasure. Always yeah, a pleasure you. to have you, Punavo. Have a great day. Okay, we've been talking with Opunabo in Kotaria, a public affairs analyst, uh, looking at the headlines. Um, we'll take a short break now. When we return, we'll be dealing with World Press Freedom Day. That's our first hot topic. Stay with us.